Apple's new Mac mini is slower than the previous generation and here's why. So first of all, the new Mac mini comes with the new M2 chip and also costs $100 less. However, the base model's 256 gig SSD is actually slower by 30 to 50%, which wouldn't really be such a big deal if you could upgrade it, but oh yeah, no, you, you can't. Ever. By the way, please leave a like and maybe follow for more because that would be great. The SSD is slower than the previous 256 gig model because it only uses a single NAND chip, whereas the previous generation used two. So if you want better performance, you just have to pay $200 extra for the 512 gig model, which is crazy because you can get a whole two terabyte 980 Pro for a bit less than that. So here's really a big reason why I just really don't like Apple. I mean, I mean, their new Mac mini is fantastic. Honestly, $600 for the M2 chip 8 core, which is a fantastic chip. Uh, but the thing is, the base model is sort of unusable and you also can't upgrade it, which is the problem. So it's got eight gigabytes of unified memory. So uh, I suppose that also shares uh, with the GPU memory as well. So you don't even have eight gigs of RAM. And the thing is, you are probably going to need more RAM than that. My old 2012 MacBook Air has 4 gigs of RAM. It came with that. It cannot be upgraded. And the only reason that machine is really just not usable anymore is because 4 gigs of RAM is just not enough to run macOS anymore. So this is just either going to be a paperweight right out of the box or in a few years. It's definitely a shame because this chip is going to be great for a very long time, but the RAM is already sort of outdated. So if you want to go for a configuration that would make sense, which is 16 gigabytes, that already costs $200 more, which is a lot of money. And then you also have the cheaper storage that you can't upgrade. So $200 extra for an extra 256 gigs which is just crazy because the samsung 980 pro 2 terabyte ssd one of the best ssds in existence will cost you 180 dollars by itself so it, it it just it really sucks you can't upgrade these things because you could just take out the lower uh storage ssd you can just use that as a portable drive or something like that and you put in your own ssd uh and that's just a problem because this is sort of the minimum configuration you need to go for and now you're at a thousand dollars which is still pretty decent but i mean if you could sort of get this for like 600 and then just upgrade and stuff that would have been just a massive deal that's why i really like the way that framework does it uh because uh they just they're just so customizable they offer you various options you can do everything yourself and even when you're purchasing the laptop you actually don't have to buy any storage on your own you can just bring your own storage and memory and there's always deals on storage and memory going on so you're just gonna get a better deal again over here you can see it's about 300 pounds so this is even more than dollars but on amazon we just have a nice deal for this two terabyte ssd uh because uh companies usually when you're specking out a laptop or a computer they are gonna be marking up these prices a little bit because that's just how they make more money and with apple is just a lot worse because you can't upgrade the memory at all as far as storage goes you could have external storage but then you can have some problems because apple has the t2 encryption chip and you can it's it's just more of a hassle to set up i believe you still need to have an ssd with the t2 chip running even if you are booting off of an external drive and it's just it's just sort of messy. Apple just does this because th this is the way they really make money. You know, somebody pays an extra 400 bucks for just a one terabyte SSD. It, it, like, that's crazy. I mean, if you just want to upgrade to two terabytes by their own standards, you're literally paying more for the SSD than this entire computer, which it, it just doesn't make sense. So unfortunately, like the thing is, this would have been a fantastic machine if Apple had a bit more reasonable prices in this department, or if they just allowed you to swap out the components on your own. For instance, I might have gotten this. It would be nice to have another Mac for like development and maybe emulating iOS devices and stuff like that. Uh, but the thing is, when you factor in what you have to upgrade to actually get a usable machine that's actually gonna last you a long time and that you're actually gonna want to use, it's just a lot more expensive than it might first appear.